first of all, you've made it to the third date. Congratulations. To get to this point, you've undoubtedly won her trust, built some solid rapport, and fingers crossed, escalated sexual tension. When executed effectively, a third date can serve as a sort of bridge, bringing you into a more stable portion of the courting phase. The third date is also a time where couples frequently seal the deal, if you know what I mean. For this reason, third date questions should get a lot deeper. As such, the third date is an excellent time to gauge your moral and intellectual compatibility, as well as your sexual compatibility. To help you out, I created a list of questions to help you decide whether you wanna take things to the next level and invite her back to your place. Asking emotionally compelling questions can also help to bring the two of you closer together. So I cherry picked some of these questions from the now famous study, The Experimental Generation of Interpersonal Closeness. The article was published in the Personality and Social Psychology Bulletin. It was also featured in one of the New York Times Modern Love Essays. So here are my favorite questions to ask on a third date. Are you religious? Talking about religion isn't taboo. Don't be afraid to discuss this subject on a third date. Sharing similar spiritual beliefs is essential for a relationship to be sustainable. At this point, you've likely built a strong enough connection that you can enter into the spiritual, religious, and political territory. The most important thing when talking about religion, politics, and other controversial topics is to respond without judgment and to keep an open mind. If your date has vastly different religious views than you, get curious rather than judgmental. Ask questions that reveal the why behind her beliefs. Was she raised in a particular faith or did she choose the spiritual practices that she now follows? And just to add to this, I want you to really try and find commonalities that you share with that woman, even if you guys have different religious beliefs or different political beliefs, where do you intersect? Maybe you don't believe the same thing overall, but you do have these areas that really complement each other where you do agree. Look for those areas, even if on the surface, it looks like you guys don't share that same thing in common. Did you vote for Trump? Politics can be incredibly polarizing, and that's not a bad thing. Don't be alarmed by a woman's emotional reactions. Inciting a negative or angry response is a million times better than being forgettable. Chemistry is about emotion and sensation, not logic. If you can't provoke emotional reactions in the women you're dating, then you're bound to wind up in the friend zone, or worse. Plus, if you have incredibly different political leanings, it's probably not going to work out romantically anyway, so why delay the inevitable? Some people consider interpolitical dating entirely off limits, but I disagree. Plenty of successful relationships and even marriages between Republicans and Democrats exist. I mean, my boyfriend voted for Trump and I'm a Democrat. That boy is crazy, but I still love him. Of course, if the girl you're on a date with posits views that are red button issues for you, the most important thing to remember is to keep your cool. You can have a disagreement and still be respectful. In fact, disagreeing is healthy and sexy. No girl wants a yes man. You have to have your own opinions and beliefs. What's your favorite part of a man's body? This question pushes the sexual envelope and damn it if it shouldn't be pushed on a third date. The sexual tension you establish on the second date needs to be elevated on the third. After all, you're not only looking for a best friend here, you're looking for a lover, a confidant, a companion, and a playmate. In other words, you're looking for the total package, aren't you? Sexy conversations should be a part of date number three. Pushing the boundaries is a good thing, especially when it comes to verbal communication. Play it too safe and the woman you're dating will plop you right down in the middle of the friend zone. Whereas discussing sex with confidence demonstrates to a woman that you're confident and secure enough to figure out where she stands with you. Flirty dialogue creates a safe space for you to gauge her interest level without violating any personal or physical boundaries. While it may feel risky to ask leading questions, it's a hell of a lot better than hanging out in limbo while she falls for some other guy. Plus, everyone knows that a confident man is an attractive man. What's your opinion on stay-at-home dads? Are they real men? Like the political subject, this question offers a more in-depth insight into her value system. 
Examine how her views align with yours. Who's in your top five? Many couples have a freebie list that consists of five celebrities they'd be allowed to hook up with if the opportunity presented itself. I like this question because it's goofy and shows that you're secure with yourself. Asking this question will prove that you're not the type of guy to puff out his chest and start seeing red when she sees a Ryan Gosling poster. What are you most afraid of? This question offers up an opportunity for both of you to demonstrate a little vulnerability without getting too sensitive. Sharing emotionally exposing stories with one another creates deep sentimental connections unlike the bonds you share with friends or coworkers. And a rich, soulful connection can be the differentiator between how a woman feels about you and how she thinks about the other guys she's dating. What do you spend the majority of your time doing? As I mentioned, the third date is often a make it or break it affair. After the third date, you might realize that you don't wanna continue the relationship. On the other hand, this date could seal the deal for both of you. Asking the woman you're dating what she spends the majority of her time doing speaks volumes about what she values most in life. It's easy to say that family comes first, but if she's spending 10 hours a day working, then family isn't her main priority right now. Are you cool with that? Learning what's most important to her and vice versa is essential because having similar values is part of what makes for a healthy and sustainable relationship. What are the top three places you spend your time? The locations people spend their time can tell you a lot about their personality. If she likes to chill at home, go to the beach and hit a friendly jazz club, you can probably guess that she's pretty laid back. Alternatively, if she likes to spend her time rock climbing, traveling and skydiving, then you've likely got an adrenaline junkie on your hands. You devil you. There's nothing wrong with either type of personality, but understanding more about her can help you get a better idea of your long-term compatibility. For instance, if you get energy from socializing with friends, but going out all the time zaps hers, the writing might be on the wall. You can't force compatibility. Everyone is on their best behavior when they first meet, but the truth eventually comes out. So why not lead with it from the start? Showing up as the authentic man that you are right from date one will help you sidestep major blowups and social collisions. It will also help you to find the woman you're genuinely searching for much faster. What's your guiltiest pleasure? This question offers a fun and flirty opportunity to exchange juicy stories, and it might even get her in the mood. During moments of laughter, when you ask these sorts of questions, be sure to practice some touching. The power of touch is beyond verbal reasoning and it speaks volumes. Don't be afraid to communicate interest by touching the small of her back, brushing the hair off of her shoulder, or leaning in for a kiss when the mood feels right. Trust me, you'll be glad that you did. What are you most grateful for? This question is a great way to deepen the conversation and get to know her better. Also, it helps to reveal if she's a narcissist, if she has no uh, gratitude for anything in her life, that might be a huge red flag. Gratitude demonstrates humility. And if she's not grateful, she's probably an a-hole. So maybe it's better you bounce. So having a good list of third day location starters is just the beginning. You also need to have stellar answers to those questions. A woman is more often than not going to respond with, I don't know. How about you? And when she does, you'd better be ready with a killer answer that demonstrates some wicked sexy morals and values. Want to make sure to ace your upcoming third date? How about acing all of your dating and relationship goals? If so, I'm here to help. My clients and I train in depth on conversation and storytelling in my coaching program, Dating Decoded. And once clients master these advanced topics, no date or social interaction is ever the same. The teachings in my coaching program, Dating Decoded, are all evidence-based and originate from my 100-date experiment. During that time, I gained a wealth of knowledge on the intricacies of the modern dating world. And now I know what works and what doesn't in dating, and I help men understand how women think so they can find their ideal partner just like I did. Want to learn more about how my program can help you date women that you're super excited about? Check out my free masterclass linked below this video. That wraps up this video, guys. If you like this video, make sure to like it, subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment in the comments below and follow us on social media. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time.